and welcome to Sanja TV. I'm Hagia Antwardi host Amin Tillo and today I'm Hagia at MISAF which stands for the Mosaic International South Asian Film Festival. Back for their 10th year, the organizers are promising a great selection of films from around the world. There's going to be many industry events, there's going to be filmmaking sessions and of course a screening of over 40 films. And to get everything started, tonight is the North American premiere of the film Kamali. So let's go check out all the action from the red carpet. Farid Yazdani is joining me here at the red carpet of Misaf. Okay, so you were telling me you are no stranger to Misaf. Tell me how many times have you been here? It's probably my third event now here, yeah, since 2005, back when it was just called Mosaic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you go way back. So tell me, how has the festival grown in your opinion? It's been great. It's a great It's a great avenue to showcase South Asian voices, South Asian diversity, uh, South Asian feature films and films that are being made out here. A lot of them have gone on to won awards. Uh, Donkey Head just last year has gotten great success and it actually showcased here first mm -hmm. and has now gone on to win uh, multiple awards. So yeah, shout out to Donkey Head. Okay, there we go. We're getting some uh, great recommendations. Yeah. Now tell me a little bit, what's it like being an actor here in Toronto? It's great. It's fun. You stand out, that's for sure. You can count on your hands how many uh, people of color sometimes are in the casting room. Yeah. But um, uh, it also feels great when you get to represent uh, your culture. Um, I'm Iranian and Trinidadian, so I have kind of an East Asian, West Indian background. Yeah. Um, and I've had the pleasure of portraying both characters on screen. And, you know, I get a lot of nice messages saying it's great to see someone that I could look and say, hey, I could, I could relate to that person. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult at times, but you know, when we see success, especially amongst our peers, it feels fantastic. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because I know the festival's really been trying to showcase new voices, right? I think oftentimes when you look at TV or film, it's sometimes you don't see a lot of people of color and you don't see sometimes local actors being used. So I wanted to know your opinion. Do you feel like with all the productions coming here, do you have enough work here in, uh, in, as an actor? Do you feel like more needs to be done by the industry to make sure that our actors here stay here and don't have to go somewhere else like L.A.? It's funny you say that, you know, uh, it's growing. Uh, we could always use more all the time. I will say the pandemic was a strange uh, situation for us in the sense that it kind of helped actors in Canada. Um, you know, the local productions were forced to use local actors and they realized there's a lot of talent within this community right here. And it's exactly like you said, uh, you know, a lot of talent sometimes fl flies away like geese to the States to find success. Um, but as of late, you know, there's been a lot of production slates with Bell and CBC that have, you know, showcased a lot of local talent. and. Thanks to that, we've seen a growth, I think, in BIPOC talent being showcased on Momox Television, and I'm hoping it grows, but to your first question, it could always be more. I think there's always room for more. Uh, I think it's a great start, but the key word is it's, it's a start. Okay, so let's let everybody know where they can catch you. So what are you working on right now? I'm currently on Moonshine, which is on CBC. Uh, we will be getting a US release quite soon. We're on season three now. Um, and we're gonna be on CBC and CBC Gem coming this fall. And stay tuned for a US release announcement. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, guys. Festival director Arshad Khan is joining me here on the red carpet and back for its 10th year. I got to ask you, how does it feel? Lucky number 10. It feels amazing, especially since the pandemic uh, made us go online. And uh, uh, last uh, MISAF was held uh, in Toronto at the TIFF Bell Lightbox. And we could only do one world premiere of a film, Donkey Head, and the rest of the films were all online. And this year, finally, we're back in the cinemas. We're back with our team. You know, we're back with everybody and everyone's super excited. And uh, it's nice to be able to experience the full, uh, you know, the full roster of uh, shorts, documentaries and features in the cinema where it's supposed to be seen. Of course. Now, Arshad, how do you make sure that Janit Jujay Film Festival's Hagia, how do you make sure that you stand out with yours? What we do is uh, we, we don't want to stand out. We want to... We want to be um, we want to be welcoming. We make ours, uh, uh, you know, family festival, community festival. We want to tell uh, stories to our community that otherwise they will not experience. You know, they will not get. They will only. You know, they see Hollywood and Bollywood films. They don't get to see what the beauty and the range of South Asian cinema from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Canada, UK, USA that there is. And so we curate a beautiful, full film program and we invite the filmmakers, we invite actors, and then you can ask questions, you can meet folks. So it's, it's very special. We like to make it uh, very inclusive and we don't want to compete with anybody. We, we like all the other festivals. We go to all the other festivals, you know? And uh, you know, if we stand out, we stand out because people, we are loving towards people and people are loving towards us and it's uh, community building. 
of course. We are here in Toronto, which I always say is a hot spot of talent, especially South Asian talent. And I know from being in this industry, oftentimes it seems like there's not opportunities for South Asian. We just met an actor actually that said, you know, sometimes you've got the same actors going for the one person of color role. So I know with these film festivals, it's important because it actually brings international attention here, right? You get attention to the filmmakers, to the production team, to the actors, to everybody, right? So tell me in the 10 years that you've been in this business, how have you seen the industry grow and what do you think maybe still needs to be done? Well, the fact is that we started this festival because we are filmmakers ourselves. A lot of our volunteers are filmmakers and they've gone on to done, do excellent things. Our MISAF stars are all, you know, actors, emerging actors, you know. Um, so we, we try to be, you know, we, because we are filmmakers, we understand what filmmakers want. Because we are filmmakers, we understand what filmmakers need and we try to give it to them, you know. We try to make it a festival which helps educate the public about good cinema again. Okay, so I know the last question we have got for you might be a hard one, but I'm going to ask you this. Which of the films are you really excited? Like, if you could pick, I'm not going to say one, maybe a couple that for you just really made an impact on you that you want to make sure other people check out. Well, the thing is there are some films like Joyland, which everyone knows about. Kamli, everybody knows about. You know, these are like films that have won awards, that are really well known. Um, you know, What's Love Got To Do With It was at TIFF. You know, now it's like all over the world. Uh, you know, it's gonna, it's, it's, a, it's a very fun film uh, by Shekhar Kapoor, big director. Yeah. I want to tell you about the smaller films. Yeah. Sana by Sad Saria, mm -hmm. playing on Saturday. Hawa, a Bangladeshi film, was Bangla's, Bangladeshi's entry to the Oscars. Then you have Exegesis Lovecraft by Kaz Pasha. Uh, who's a, it's a documentary playing on uh, Friday, 12 noon. Um, then we have uh, Marginalizing Minorities, you know, a, sh a small film about what's happening in India. You know, um, then while we watched To Kill a Tiger, both very powerful documentary films that have to be seen on the big screen because they're beautiful, but they're also extremely moving. So I'm excited about the program because we cur crafted and curated a very tight and strong film program with excellent shorts. The shorts will move you and they will move you to tears and they'll make you laugh. You know, shorts are really important to see because a lot of the filmmakers are here for the shorts. They're from New York, Montreal, all over the place. And they are unique stories and they're a mixed bag of stories. The shorts are always really good to come and see. Yeah, okay, well, that sounds all exciting. Can't wait to check it out. Thanks for chatting with us. Thank you so much for your support and for supporting independent cinema, supporting small festivals, and thank you for your love. Thank you all. Thank you to the viewers. Rocky Mozeri is joining me on the red carpet and a big congratulations because you are our Misa star. So how does it feel to be part of this film festival? Um, I feel so grateful to be honored and to be here. It's such a great group of people and I'm really excited. So tell me how important is it to have these film festivals right in Toronto for actors like you? I think it's super important. It creates a sense of community and there's a lot of connections that can be made here and it's a way to celebrate film. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, any films in particular? I know this is a hard question, but is there a film in particular that you're really excited to check out that you think everyone else should check out? Uh, I mean, they all look amazing. I really want to see Comely, that's which is starting tonight, so I would say that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. but that's what I'm really looking forward to. Amazing. So tell us a little bit about uh, being on TV here at Canadian TV. What has that journey been like for you? Um, it's been, I've, there's been a lot of uh, different movements within it. I mean, I started with a degree in environmental science. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then, um, and then I went into comedy and it's just been sort of exciting. I've been making a lot of my own work, but then of course I'm on Run the Burbs now, which I also wrote on the first season and they just got renewed for a third season. So that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Any advice you would have? Because there's so many people that are attending here that are aspiring actors, filmmakers, producers. I mean, you have a chance now where you have a platform. You and most people would say you've made it, right? Like you're on CBC, you've got a show, you're writing on it. Um, but there's people that maybe are not getting that first break. So, any advice you would have for them? I would definitely say be kind to yourself. It's you know we're always holding ourselves to some sort of like perfectionism, and I myself do it as well. And find your community. I think like knowing the people in your community who you can bounce ideas off of and you can work together to make stuff with like honestly you can make stuff on your phone you can put it on youtube like just start creating your own stuff with your the people that support you
That's a great advice. Thanks so much. And enjoy your time here at the film festival. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Sanya Sahid is joining me here at the red carpet of MISAF, and we are so excited to have you here. I have to ask you, how does it feel? <laughs> uh, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Yes, it is. No matter how many festivals you are in, if your film is in that festival, it's overwhelming. Yeah. And, and I'm always very nervous. So. Really? Why are you nervous? I don't know. I, just, I don't seem to get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, it takes a lot. Now, I gotta tell you, Canadian fans, what are your op opinions about them? I'm sure you've been meeting a lot of Canadian talent as well, so what are your thoughts? Um, Canada, especially Toronto, has become like one of the cities in Pakistan. There's, there are so many Pakistanis that you meet, and uh, you meet them everywhere, at, in the restaurants, in the shopping malls. So, um, one feels at home because you see so many of your own people speaking your language. So it's pretty comfortable for me here in Toronto. Yes. Now, being such a seasoned actor, I have to ask you, you know, this is the 10th year of this film festival. The kind of stories we had to tell. We have some great stories to tell. Uh, and we tell them well as well. But nobody recognized that because our movies never went outside Pakistan. And now we have that space. We found that little small uh, opening. And uh, I think um, it's not only about the movies, it's also about the country and what we have to say. Yeah, yeah, of course. And showcasing the talent, right? I always say it's so amazing that now people don't have to leave their homes or families to go across the world and start new. I'm mean, like, now you can be in Pakistan and work in the industry and actually promote your culture and heritage, right? Absolutely. I think it's all the more important now that you stay in the country and you tell those stories. And I think uh, that is something I also really enjoy now more. Now tonight, the North American premiere of Kamala. So any thoughts about it? Has there been any reception so far? Uh, well, Kamala was very well received in Pakistan and um, a lot of love has been pouring in since. It's been to uh, a lot of festivals as well and we've had great reviews. I hope people here today like it. Um, some of them are coming to watch it again, I have been told. They have seen it before. I hope they enjoy it again and uh, I hope to look, uh, and I actually look forward to the question and answer session. Okay. I want to see what they have to ask about the film. Ah, yeah. questions, we like that. Why did you want to do this film? Why is it so special for everyone to check it out? Um, okay, so Kamni is not just uh, a good film, it's not just a good story. It's a very important story for us. Uh, also as storytellers and filmmakers, because uh, all in any kind of portrayal of women has always been through the male eye or the male gaze. But this particular film, this narrative, is from a feminine perspective. It is from a woman's perspective. It is her point of view. It is um, her narrative from her eyes. So um, that was also different for us to play when we were reading the script. Uh, and um, I think I have never seen another film in Pakistan, at least where we are talking about the female desire as in its true physical sense and not intellectualizing it or not philo philosophicalizing it. You know, it is, it is in, the, in the true uh, physical sense uh, with so much compassion. And um, so, yeah, I think it, to me that is why it's, it's a very important film. And it sounds like a film that you normally don't get to see. So that always makes it interesting too because you want to have a safe space. And I feel like that's why films are so special because sometimes having those difficult conversations, you may not be able to have it one-on-one, -on -one, maybe you don't know the words, but then somehow in a movie, it helps you not only realize you're not the only one thinking of these you know, thoughts or you know this theme, but it kind of makes you feel like, okay, maybe this is a safe space for others. So this panel, I think it's going to be really interesting afterwards, right? Thank Thank you so much for chatting with us. I know so many people are lined up to meet you, so we enjoy having you here in Toronto and we hope you visit us again. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Joining me now, I've got the Singh family, of course, the stars of CBC 
Lucy's Bollywood here at Misa. All right, Singh family, say hello to Sanja TV. Hi, Sanja TV. We are so excited to have you here. Okay, so how exciting is it to be part of this film festival? It's so exciting. As soon as we came in, the love, the energy from all the festival organizers, all the board of directors, it's been overwhelming. It's I did not expect this, so we're super, super excited to be here. So what we get to be treated to, there's going to be a special screening of Bollywood, yes. and then I hear there's going to be a one-on-one -on -one, uh, panel as well, so we get to ask the family deep questions, really difficult questions. I'm sure you haven't been getting it ready. I got to ask you, you know, what's the reception been like now that you've had the show completed, season one, hopefully season two coming up, what's the reception been like? You know what, um, although the South Asian community has been behind us, which we expected, it's a show based on a South Asian family, but the non-South Asian community that have been messaging us from uh, Regina, from Halifax, from Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Island, from all over Canada, USA, UK, Singapore, India, I don't know how these guys are watching it, but they're watching it and they're messaging and the love is unreal. Yeah. yeah. Has there been, because you know this film festival, it's about showcasing new voices and also diversity. And so this is actually a great example because you normally don't get to see a lot of South Asian culture from a real point of view, right? It's done in a movie form or a documentary. So this was like real stuff like the volley and then right. family business and then you've got weddings and everything. So do you feel like there was an educational aspect to it that maybe a lot of people didn't really know a lot about South Asian culture that were educated because of your show? That was actually one of the best things about working with CBC on this. They never spoon fed us and nor did they want to spoon feed the audience. Like when we talk about Diwali, there was no, Diwali is a cultural of lights and we celebrate. It was just like, we're celebrating Diwali and here's how we do it. So it was a very um, voyeuristic approach to take to the whole thing, which I love. There was such a brush of fret here for all of us. It was, we didn't have to dumb anything down. We were able to be ourselves and just have them capture the moment and what we do every year as a family on Diwali or what we do every day going to the store or what dad does every morning his prayers every day at the store there was not explaining of like here's the agarbati and you know here's what we have to do with it it was just like they just caught him being him and that was really refreshing and for people that knew knew and people that didn't knew have google and they just searched it what's that what's that incense he's holding why is he holding incense so that was the best part about doing a show like this we were able to be ourselves and not have to really spoon feed the audience and they really stayed along word for word. Yeah. My favorite part was it reminded me of my mom because one, my mom never throws out anything and she's a big fan of blankets. We have so many blankets in the house. I'm like, we're not going to use anything. So I really appreciate that, that it was a reflection of most South Asian families. So that's, I think, really interesting to see. Dad, any thoughts here? Yes. First thing, I'm so proud of them today is the first Eid Mubarak. Eid ka pehla din hai aaz. Eid ke liye hum log. Sub Kateo Kaya, Chandan Fashion, mm -hmm. full family. I am. Thanks very much for Sanja TV. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Okay, before I let you go, all the viewers want to know season two. Can we say anything? You got to stay tuned to watch. You got to keep supporting the show. If you haven't seen the show, make sure you check it out. Bollywood, just Google it. It will come on CBC Jam. Make sure you watch. With your support, we know we will get a season two. Thanks so much. Great seeing you. Thank you. We'll see you again very soon. Sure. And that's it from the red carpet. Lots more coming up right after this. Shashi and Pulkit are joining me here at the Misa red carpet. All right, gentlemen, tell me a little bit what it feels like to be here. It feels fantastic. I've known about this festival for many years and first time here. First time um, attending. The hospitality is fantastic. I love the team. Excited to be here. Yeah, you can feel the buzz, right? Like everyone's yeah, excited, yeah. especially after the pandemic. People are really excited to be back and doing what they love, watching movies. So tell us a little bit about your movie. Sure. Um, so uh, the film is called Stay With Me A Little While. It's a short film. I'm the producer on it. He's the director, writer, and lead actor. Many roles. Many roles. Uh, it's screening tomorrow. Uh, and it's and he can tell you more about the film, the story of the film. So please tell us the plot line. The film is a relationship drama with a mental health focus. So it's about a young couple in their 30s. Uh, the relationship is on the brink of a breakdown due to a mental health crisis triggered by my character. And the point of view is really from her point of view. Uh, this is a long-term relationship and the toll that his condition takes on her as the caregiver. We often don't explore certain themes around those in families, in relationships, whether it's um, an elder or a child or a couple, the toll any sort of ailment can take on, on the individual who is doing the caregiving. So 
It's really about love, it's about commitment, but it's also about guilt and resentment because ultimately she has a decision to make. She can leave, she has a choice. So that's really the existential question that we want to pose and try to ask the audience. Okay, this sounds like something that I would think we've been seeing a lot of coming across. So was there a specific incident or a person that motivated you to do this movie? Well, I think I can speak for, and I think I can speak for a lot of South Asians generally, mental health has historically been so taboo, right? There's a lot of undiagnosed mental health that permeates our extended families. And so much of that I saw in my own extended family that was unspoken, unsaid, and just how, how destructive it got over time, over decades, and how much was, was left on the table. Uh, if we could have only addressed and confronted certain issues and also recognized where those, where those conditions lie and what we can do to help improve people's lives, I think it would have been much better off for everybody. So I think that really inspired me in some ways. These two characters happen to be South Asian, but we don't address them as South Asians, as Desis. This is a universal topic. And, and one of the interesting things when we were putting the film together was when we showed it, when we, the, when we shared the script with our team and our crew, everyone had a story they brought to it. So they were like, oh, we see this experience in our lives played out in this script. Even our, you know, our other uh, lead actress, Gayatri, you know, she was like, oh, wow, this, I, I get this, like, I've been through something like this. So, like, everyone had something they could bring to it. And I think that sort of also made the experience of making the film even more special, yeah. that we all needed it, sort of, to, to, to make this and let it out there, you know? I know the film festival and their media release said that one of the biggest themes this year was having films that were thought provoking and I think your film is a great example of that. Uh, what about getting the film made? I feel like, you know, it's one thing to be here after all the work has been done and, you know, you're like, here's something I've been working on for years and, you know, it's a final project. But I know for a lot of producers, filmmakers, writers, it can be difficult to get the financing, to get the team together. So can you maybe share your experience? that hopefully will inspire others that want to follow in your footsteps. Yeah, I think for us, you know, uh, when Shazi started writing the script, um, we were constantly sending it back and forth and sharing ideas and brainstorming. So I think the developing part of that story took the longest time maybe. Um, and then it was sort of, you know, trying to figure out how to make it with the, which people we want to bring in, in, into the story. Um, there's one other main character, so that was a crucial casting decision for us. And she's fabulous, Gayatri. Um, and then I think once we started putting it together, I would say in this film, because it was very contained, a lot of it just takes place in an apartment. And so that kind of made it a little bit easier for us. So I think one thing I would suggest for filmmakers who are maybe struggling with raising money for films is also just like the scope of it, trying to make it more contained or make it, like if money's an issue, sometimes like limiting locations is, is smart because you can, um, so I think, yeah, so the one I, uh, important advice I would give is sort of scaling back, right? And, and you can still do the same scene, the same emotions in a more contained space, and that costs less, and that's less, you know, hassle to put together. So just thinking more creatively, how can you take the same emotion and story and, you know, it. Make it make it work for what you have, right? So if there's a, a will, there's a way, basically. You can make it happen, and you might just have to kind of be creative with your means. Uh, before I let you go, you know, this is a great networking event, right? You're going to be meeting uh, a talent from all over the world that are coming here. So is there anyone in particular that you're hoping to network with? Or, you know, is there maybe a specific reception you get for the film from this event? Can you share with us? I honestly, I come to this with just open arms and just, uh, I just want to meet anyone and everyone because I, you know, I, I love, I just love meeting people doing different things and having different stories and just already tonight I've met so many interesting people. Okay. So I don't really come to this with like, expecting specific people I want to meet. Yeah. And I think I just meet more interesting people that way. It's more fun for me. What about for you? Yeah. I think it's a similar sort of vibe for me. I, I'm, I come with sort of open arms and an open heart because I want to meet other filmmakers such as me and I want to hear their stories. I want to know what kind of ideas they're coming up with, what kind of projects are they making. 
and especially in the South Asian diaspora here in North America, right? We're coming in from New York to see what our Canadian counterparts are doing. I think is it's really nice because it's such a strong and vibrant community here. So it's always inspiring for me. Uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to all the programming. Of course, of course, and getting ready for project number two. So thank you, gentlemen, for chatting with us. Have a great time. Thank you. Arshad Mahmood is joining me here one of the directors of Mosaic Festival. Of course, one of the biggest festivals that takes place here in Toronto, and you are the man behind uh, the event, and of course, just one of many people behind. I should say, you have a great team. Uh, now, talk to us a little bit about coming and supporting this. This is part of actually uh, the overall concept of supporting arts here in Canada. So talk to me a little bit about, since you came up with this concept, and today, how has it grown? It is incredible, it is amazing, and thank you very much for your support. You have always been there to take our advice and take it to the people. Uh, talk about MISAF. Uh, this is the 10th successful year that MISAF is happening. MISAF is a film festival which started as a film component, a mosaic festival back in the days when we used to show one film or the other. And then Ashraf Khan came to me one day with Anya McKenzie and says, guys, why don't we create a full fledged film festival because this city, this country, this province needs another film festival. And I said, you know what? It makes sense. Though we don't have a lot of money, but let's see what we can do and let's create the festival. So this is Mosaic International South Asian Film Festival, which started as a film component of Mosaic Festival. And today it stands on the 10th anniversary of MISAP. So MISAP is, is looking after all of the South Asian countries, this is the only professionally established and managed and operated and delivered film festival of the city of Mississauga. There isn't another established film festival in Mississauga. So we are trying to meet the demands and there is a lot of demand. Think about Mississauga, 850,000 people, 50% or more are South Asians. And they speak Urdu, Hindi or one of those languages. So what we try and do is, we try and bring in the films which are shorts, dogs, full length features, Canadian premieres, international premieres, world premieres, films which are actually award winning films all over the world and you will find them at MISAF 2023 starting from tonight's film which is Kamli. None other than Kamli, Sarmat Kusat. Can you imagine Sarmat Kusat? making films from Pakistan, his earlier films, the way they were they were accepted and acknowledged the world over. So we have Sanya Said, the beautiful Sanya Said, who's a veteran. You look at her and she looks like a little girl, but she's a veteran. Over 30 years of experience of directing, acting, and producing films and television. So what we try and do is, we try and bring the professional stuff. We try and bring stuff that you may not otherwise see in the commercial cinema. And the only way you can enjoy those films is sitting in a theater with a good sound system, with an IMAX screen, and having a wall. That's what MISAF 2023 is. So those people who haven't bought the tickets yet, there is still time. You can go to MISAF, M-I-S-A-F-F, MISAF.com, look at the tickets, look at the schedule, and buy your ticket. Come support our film industry, because if you don't support it, so all those people who are sitting here watching from home, please, if you haven't bought your ticket for MISAF 2023, you should do it now. It is less than a regular film costs you, and the festival pass is obviously full of a lot of surprises for you. You can come in. You could have come in for the red carpet. You could have talked for or to all the artists who are present here today, and you still have a lot many opportunities tomorrow. As a matter of fact, we have Bollywood. Bollywood, the whole crew and cast of Bollywood, which is the latest uh, hit show from CBC, is going to be here. So you can ask them all the questions that you need to ask, and then people still don't know, <laughs> after having spent 30 years, that they don't walk in front of the camera, but they do. That's right. Uh, you know what's because everyone's excited to see the movies. That's why it's not about you and me. People are just like so excited. And you know, that's why we want to make sure you can feel that excitement at home as well. So that's MISAF. We've given a lot of coverage on it. I want to quickly, before we end, uh, give a shout out to Mosaic. That's something to look forward to. And again, same thing, giving a platform for the professionals worldwide to come here. And of course, our amazing local talent to get a platform as well. Can you quickly plug where they can find out information about Mosaic? 3D Mosaic 2023. 18th successful year 
over 50, 60,000 people in two days. Celebration Square, Mississauga. The address is 300 City Center Drive. While I try and keep everybody else at bay, I'll give you the address once again. 300 City Center Drive, Celebration Square, Mississauga, 4th and 5th of August. And I am not going to tell you the headliners that you will see this year, but they are the biggest names in the world of South Asian music today in Canada and world over. So if you want to see that free, all ages, two days, activities, 16 hours of stage time, come to TD Mosaic Festival and you know where to go. Mosaicfest.com. Like us, share our information and be a part of Mosaic success. We will wait for you. 4th and 5th of August, free parking. Come to Mosaic. <laughs> We'll be there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You. I hope you enjoyed all the excitement from the opening night of this year's Misa. That was it from us here at Sanja TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.